Hey, what's up, guys? It is Gigstacker, and yeah, we're gonna have an interesting stream here today. Um, I am in Discord if anybody wants to join me and have a discussion. If anybody has any questions live, um, you can jump in Discord, you can ask me yourself, or if you want to post it in, uh, you know, in the chat, that's also cool. Um, so yeah, so the main thing that I wanted to talk about today was the gig economy versus side gigs. Um, like what both of them are, the benefits of, you know, using each of them, and what, you know, how that can impact your, your financial life, I guess. Um, also, I'd like to give a shout out to, to my brother A. Kent. Hey, how's it going, man? Um, definitely need to hop on that that on force and uh, start make stacking stacking some in a work market and start stacking some more gigs but um, but yeah so first things first um, the gig economy uh, pretty much app based gigs where somebody requests work or you know somebody needs something done somebody needs something delivered you go ahead and uh, you know hop onto the app that you signed up for and take care of it and you get paid. Um, it's pretty much as simple as that, you know, for the majority of the gigs. Now we're talking about like Uber, Postmates, you know, Grubhub, you know, these, but these things, they're, they're pretty much like guaranteed money, um, you know, which for a lot of people can be really nice. Now, if you were to compare that to like a side gig, um, with side gigs, it's not necessarily guaranteed money, but I feel like with side gigs, there's like a higher potential of being able to make money. Oh, okay, cool, cool. He's firing up Discord. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so you just click on that link, and then it'll you know it'll drop you right on in the uh, the Discord. Um, yeah. Also, here's the link again. If anybody if anybody's interested, oops, that is not what I was. Uh, Definitely not what I was trying to post there. My bad. That's the live stream rip. Okay. There we go. That's the link for the Discord. Um, yeah, so with side gigs, side gigs, I feel like there's less of a guarantee for making money, but there's more of a potential um, long-term earnings. So... So let's say you've got a side gig as a web developer, right? So, you know, your main job, you know, you're doing whatever, and you've got a side gig to make websites for people. Hey, what's going on, Akent? All right, looks like you're, uh, you got yourself muted and deafened. Um, anyways, yeah. So... You know, one of the big upsides for being able to do a side gig, like let's say web development, for example, um, like it's, it has the potential of turning into like a long term business, which, uh, you know, which can be really nice. Hey, Kent, all right, can you hear me? All right, you sound, you sound kind of far. Yeah. Um, so you know that that has like a a really big upside of being able to, you know, possibly transition your side gig into a career. Um, sorry, not just a career, but a, an actual business um, where you can uh, a little better now. Actually, you know what? Maybe I can turn you up. All right, can you say something now? All right, still a little low. Okay, all right, sounds good. Yeah, so, you know, being able to transition from, you know, a side gig to, like, an actual business is is something that's very, very powerful. Like, let's say, let's take, for example, um, let's say web development, right? So, you know, you got a side gig and you you do like, let's say, websites on the weekends for people. Now, 
at, at a certain point in time, if you if you see that it's really really cranking up, um, you could uh, you could transition that into being your main income, into being your main business, um, and and even possibly um, if you're getting enough clients to to even hiring on some people to where you can really really ramp up your you know your your business um now with the gig economy for the most part that's not really something that you can do um you know there's a couple there's a couple of areas where you know that statement wouldn't be true um like for example with field nation you know i could go i could go ahead and start hiring people um to work let's say underneath of me um and with and with that, you know, it, it's pretty it's pretty similar in that sense. But you know, for the most part, gig economy is, you know, more guaranteed money. You go ahead and you do a task and you get paid for it, versus um, side gigs where it's not guaranteed money um, and it can potentially transition in, into a like a full blown business. Um, where you're making really, really serious money, even uh, you know, pos- potentially hiring on people to to come in and um, you know, and work for you as well, which is uh, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. Yep. Anybody who would like to jump in the Discord, uh, if you got any live questions for me, I'm gonna post the Discord link right here. Um, yeah. Anybody if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. You can jump in the Discord talk. Yeah, either way, we are good. Let me see. So, yeah, I think I think that's pretty much my like the main ideas that I wanted to get across in terms of like the gig economy versus a side gig, you know. Main takeaway, gig economy is is almost guaranteed money if you can get in with a company and you get, you know, got some some tasks or, you know, jobs lined up. Um, uh, versus um, versus a side gig where, you know, it might take longer for you to to start getting clients. It might take longer for you to, you know, start start getting money coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's. I think that's that's a pretty pretty good overview of of the two of them. Um, you know. You know. With the gig economy, there's lots and lots of different uh, gigs out there. You know. You could deliver food. You can deliver packages. Now we're talking about Amazon, um, shipped, uh, delivering food, Postmates, Caviar, Grubhub. Uh, you can even get into technical work. You know, doing HVAC or IT work with Field Nation, Work Market, On Force. Um, so there's lots of big opportunities out there. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like, there's even gigs for mechanics. Um, you know, if you're a mechanic and you want to make some side money, there's a, a gig economy gig for that too, which is just absolutely bonkers. Um, but but again, like if we were to if we were to compare that sort of thing to a side gig, now let's say you're you're you know you're a mechanic by day, but you want to make some money on weekends. Um, now you could totally go ahead and find yourself some clientele um, to to do some mechanics work for them on the side. <laughs> oh my God, that's too funny. <laughs> All right, so Impact says you still use the the same gig apps as you were in Maryland. Uh, pretty much everything except for Amazon Flex. I'm not doing Amazon Flex anymore because I was terminated, which freaking sucks. Um, Elan says, please bring your twin from Nigeria on. He's so full of wisdom. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's that. We're gonna save. We're gonna save that. Uh, save that one for a little later. Bring uh, Chief Babatunde on here. Uh, hey, Kent, you, you still there? Oh man, 
Do I do I sound laggy for you? Somewhat. Uh I wonder you know what? I probably didn't mess around with the settings for the server. Um now you're coming through crystal clear now. You you said it sounds clear now? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, you sound you sound pretty good as well there. Um, yeah. So what? So like from the from from the you know the talk we were I was just having about like gig economy versus side gigs. What do you, what's what's your take on that? My take basically is um, it's a new paradigm shift for a lot of people who are trying to you know transition either from working in the office space mm -hmm. to working with someone else to actually working for themselves and even turn it into where it's almost like a small business for them. Okay, okay. I see. One of the, thing, one of the things I used to do, and I think I told you about history, uh, I used to be in IT uh, in corporate America mm -hmm. for about some years and I decided to get tired of the mundane nine to five in the office. Right. And I always had a desire to be a, an entrepreneur, so I decided to Try to take this venture with uh, with the gig economy, mm -hmm. leveraging that along with my uh, interest in cryptocurrency. So I kind of do a little bit of both now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. So I probably, I probably, I do a lot of my my gig economy stuff, and then I parlay some of my earnings from that into the cryptocurrency investing or. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. All right. So, so I guess that's I guess that's one part that I that I didn't really talk about. Um, you know, people using the the gig economy to kind of you know get out of the office, get out of their nine to five, and take a little bit more control um, without necessarily. You know, taking the full risk of starting their own business. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That makes that makes one a lot the, of sense. One of the challenges that I ran into though, when I was tr trying to transition early on, mm -hmm. um, I find gigs, particularly on Bill Nation or work or Longville, I couldn't find gigs that were like towards the evening hours or on the weekends. Oh. Would, yeah. Uh, so. I had to do it. One of the things that what you normally suggest is, is uh, setting aside enough funds uh, from your regular job, at least six months to a year worth of uh, your salary. Right. And then make the transition. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> but cool. But in the meantime, what I generally did was took, you know, whatever I could get you know, on the weekdays or the weekends, mm -hmm. like, you know, small projects, one time projects, one off projects. And I would, at the same time, build up my skill set on those platforms and go on from there. Now you just started doing all kinds of, you know, doing the right share stuff and the mm -hmm. food delivery, things that they just kind of help augment that. Ah, wow, okay, cool. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah, um... Yeah, one issue, like I, I think I told you, I, I've been doing a lot of Field Nation. Um, like I got, I got a as a part of this really big project out here in um, the Washington State area, and um, it's pretty much like a like a nine to five sort of thing um, where I'm driving out and doing these installations, and a lot, most of these work orders on Field Nation are in the morning, right? So, you know, with me doing, you know, Monday through Friday, like nine to five with Field Nation, I, I still want to make some more money and I want to make like big bucks. Like I don't want to work for, you know, 10 or 15 dollars an hour doing caviar for the most part. Like I want to I want to make my 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks an hour on Field Nation. But the problem is none of those work orders are in the afternoons or on weekends. So. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna have to go back to the back to the gig stacker basics and uh, stop being so picky with my pay rate. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the one thing that uh, one of my buddies was telling me about. Is like, man, you may just have to take the deal with that. Yeah. No. 
swallow your pride and just get it in and mm-hmm. look towards the end of the week meet your uh, weekly goal. That was the other thing I kept running into was, well, man, I'm looking at, at you know, topping out at minimum around $300 a day. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you can't look at it like that. Look at it on a weekly goal. Because uh, every week, the projects don't even, you know, you may not even pick up anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, so, whenever that happens, what I do is I augment some of the other gigs that I can do. You know, Amazon Flex, mm-hmm. Uber, mm-hmm. and if I decide I want to take some extra time off, I'll take some time off and go you know, mess around with our cryptocurrency. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. Very nice. So, what, uh, what, what cryptos are you into these days? Ninety percent, all of them. I mean, there's a there's some that I'm still investing in, but I, but as far as trading, mm-hmm. I mean, I trade across all the platforms. I mean, all the uh, major companies that are out there. Oh, okay. But that, what I do is generally uh, dollar cost averaging into each one of those, so I don't go in heavy on one. Oh, I, mean, I see. Hope for it to boom or anything. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's uh, I guess that's that's kind of similar to how I how I invest in the stock market. Like I, I yeah, like I don't for the most part if I'm buying a single one, it's more so play money. You know, me just putting like ten dollars in here, five dollars in there. But like the big bulk of it is is going into the um, into the ETFs where it's spread out across, you know, the entire stock market. Where if you know, one company crashes, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that's, that's cool. I, I think, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's out yet, but I remember Vanguard at one point was con- talking about doing an ETF for, um, for cryptocurrencies, like where you can just uh, buy, you know, put Vanguard? it as, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanguard has, but, uh, I know Genesis, uh, not Genesis, but, uh, Gemini, uh-huh. which is a crypto exchange. They're considering doing it as well. <laughs> If they don't already have it established right now, and the um, founders of Gemini Exchange are those people, people boss twins. Oh, okay, okay. So you, might want to, you might want to look into that, and you also might want to look into Robinhood. You also, oh, yeah. Uh, train their Dude, that's crazy. You know, I I forget. I went to the, a startup conference and and um, saw a talk by the uh, the founder of Robinhood. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting platform. Very, very interesting platform. Um, yeah, I think I think they they're starting to get def, they're starting to get more into into um, cryptos. Uh, Robinhood they started off with mostly just stocks. Yeah, they also offer um, cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah. But it's more like the ETFs. Uh, Gemini. If I'm not mistaken, they are one that has actually been experiencing the whole push towards uh, bringing in uh, institutional investors so that they can, you know, facilitate the needs of their clientele under an ETF package. Yeah. yeah. But I created my own. I, mean, I pretty much created my own ETF by just dollar cost averaging into uh, all the different 90. ones. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay. And so like with, you know, at the turn of 2018, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies were like super hot, but you know, like a month or two in, it started like crashing pretty hard. Have you, um, have you felt any of that now? Or is it like more so just buying and not necessarily selling? So the value doesn't really matter right now. The 20K towards the end of 2017 and then 2018 it just starts just kind of level out and mm-hmm. I think it's due in large part to new uh, people coming up to the uh, into the crypto oh, okay um, having weekends and not really understanding how the market fluctuates yeah. so rapidly so that's why that's why there's a lot of um, uh you're witnessing a lot of uh, down trends in the uh, market. Yeah, yeah. But once they get beyond that, yeah, they'll, they'll pick back up. I mean, the way I look at it is I'm still 
ki mga hindi siya magiging paycheck ko man. That's why I saw that's why I saw only 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, that's really that's really smart that's that's definitely smart i'm gonna have to do a video about that um just you know investing in general not necessarily telling people what to put their money in but uh but yeah that's that's cool like 10 to yeah. 10 to 20 percent that's that's really good so that means that you're you're definitely making more than you need to uh, to, to cover your cost of living working in the gig economy then yep absolutely hey that's what's up um, I, I would say, I would have to echo one, one, one thing that I would echo what you've been stating as far as coming down on your rates. You know, you're just trying to get more volume in on the on those, uh, um, on, on the and mm-hmm. those type of uh, gigs because the mindset is that a lot of these buyers, they're going to try to lowball you anyway, but they're yeah. going to try to meet you halfway. And I generally try to approach it from a perspective of, okay, if this is something that I haven't really learned and I want to kind of cut my teeth on it, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll take whatever they're offering, just to put my foot in the door. So oh, once I go in I see. and prove to them that I can do the job, then that's when I come back and renegotiate. Ah, okay, okay. That makes sense. Once you feel more comfortable doing that type of work. Exactly. I see. Yeah, exactly. And um, I also saw that when you signed up for Field Nation, you signed up as a, as a company as well, right? Um, That's correct. And so do you, do you feel like that might be um, a potential for you to, like, you know, maybe bring people on and have technicians out in the field and, you know, making money for you while you're doing something else? Yeah, that's the goal. And my, my philosophy on that is, uh, if I can minimize the amount of uh, administration on the on the front end or on the back end, mm-hmm. and um, I hire, say, for instance, you or your brother to go and do a project for me out where you're located, my philosophy is give the technician or the engineer the lion's share of the profit. Ah, uh, okay. I don't. I don't want the. I, I don't want your money. I want my money. I just want tip. I I would ask for if, if like I said, if I can keep the administration down. Like I don't have to buy any additional software to kind of manage the, the team or what have you. Mm-hmm. I'll take ten, I'll take ten percent and give you guys the rest. Just let me go out there and do the job successfully. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that. I guess it that works for both parties because you know they're getting work and you're helping them get work. So you know, ten percent doesn't seem unfair. It's pretty much the the cut that uh, Field Nation takes. Yep. Um. So like I, I had somebody else asking me about about that if I was interested in you know getting into doing that and hiring people to to run work orders for me. Um, my big thing was I I'm like really big on quality control and if I'm not out in the field I can't control how the quality works out. You know what I'm saying? And right. you know my name is on the line in that case. You know whether it's right. you know my full name or my company name. It's you know it's me and my reputation on the line every time I send somebody out there. Um, exactly. So like how how would you how would you deal with that if you were if you were to start bringing people on? The way I would do that is I would, I would actually make sure that that individual has been on field nation and has gotten at least you know a relatively. Um, Considerable amount of uh, work orders in front of the bill, and then I'll just yeah. kind of evaluate what kind of ratings that that they have been given, or mm-hmm. that they received. Uh, and at that point, if they seem to be credible, you know, take a take a stab with them and just see what they do. If they're interested, if they're going to haggle me over the price and all of that, I probably won't want to deal with them because if they do it once, they're going to want to do it all the time. Uh, so like okay. you gotta you gotta you gotta earn your stripes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, your brother's been in it. I mean, he's been dealing with it for a while, so pretty much you got to earn the stripes, and once you've kind of proven yourself on the platform, you had not had any negative ratings or mm-hmm. reviews, it makes sense for me to be willing to take a take a chance on an individual. I don't even, even go as far as having a, a, a dialogue with him, you know, get him on the phone, if I could do Skype or something like that. Yeah. You know, that's you know, approach it from that perspective, and then that way you kind of, with some degree of uh, 
reassurance. You mm-hmm. got somebody that's you know that's going to take care of you. That you're going to. Okay. Yeah, I guess that that makes that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. It's like look at it from the perspective of you know somebody hiring for any other business where you just want to do a little background investigation, make sure that that they're 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 good for a good fit, and uh, mm-hmm. you know have a conversation with them, make sure they're uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna watch watch the best interest best interest of uh, getting the work done properly. Very true. Okay. Let me ask you this. Yeah. When you first when you first started uh, doing some of your field gigs, yeah, um, is there a certain uh, radius that you would work, operate within, or you know, as far as starting out for the first time, or would you go beyond the the typical fifty mile radius? Um, when I first started, um, like I said, I I had a I, I pretty much had a full time job. And um, I really wasn't going too far. I think, I think when I first started out, I, w- I was at like a max of maybe 20 miles. Um, and I, I wasn't really getting all that many jobs at first. I was mostly working with my brother, you know, to, to get my feet wet and make sure I understood what I was doing before I went out on my own. Um, now, Shoot, I'm well. I'm willing to go as far as like 200, 300 miles if they're if they're uh, comping my my travel for me. Right, right, right. That's that was the thing that I was going to mention to you, uh, yourself and your listeners is, you know, if you're going to get on these type of platforms and you're brand new, stretch yourself a little bit further. Yeah. Because what you'll find is there aren't a lot of technicians out in those out outlying areas. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So if you start out there, you start to kind of pick up, you know, pick up some of the, you know, uh, gigs that are out there in those areas. Mm-hmm. You may find yourself picking up two or three. Uh, just last week, um, I did, I did a job that was roughly two, two hours drive for about 150 miles, mm-hmm. and at a, at a McDonald's store. Uh, I was going out to help out. He installed some of uh, those digital mini boards. Oh, and okay. I arrived, yeah, I arrived out there at the time that I needed to be there, mm-hmm. but uh, there was another tech that was supposed to have been there. They didn't assign a tech. So uh, they had to he assigned, they had to close out that work order and then have me, if I wanted to, reapply for the uh, for that uh, gig again. Well, yeah. The initial rate that I applied for was like at forty bucks an hour. Right. I tried to count after the the tech didn't show up. I canceled it, and then I reapplied on on force for a higher amount. Mm Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting it plus my time that I had spent driving out to the the first time. Oh wow! So I made two hundred dollars just doing that. Nice. And then while I was in the area, I was able to pick up a couple of other small gigs and knock those out. So I ended up about $400 that day. Hey, that's what's up. Okay. Um, and so, you, let me see. So you're you're also doing on-force and work market, right? Yes. And so how, how would you compare those gigs to, uh, to Field Nation? Relatively, the some buyers... You know, they leverage both of those platforms. Uh, okay. Um, but, but what I would say in regards to hard force, um, they don't have like a, if you don't just show all the available. Uh, mm-hmm. On the hard force. Do is, if they have a, if the buyer has a need, they'll post it immediately to all of the uh, technicians in the area. Oh. And you have a certain time you have to respond to. Yeah. And if you've got all your ducks in a row, i.e. drug test, your background check, background check, mm-hmm. you'll be pretty much assured you're going to get that uh, assignment. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they, they don't mind haggling over it. Well, I'm not going to say don't mind haggling, but once you click on accept, within about an hour, First time you're gonna end up getting that that, that work on assigned to you. That's what right. I like about. Oh. Hey, that's what's you up. Yeah, you know, with film nation, you gotta sit and hope that you end up getting that uh, particular uh, assignment. 
Right, right. And, it, you know, it, it could sometimes be, like, days before it gets assigned to you. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So I kind of leverage, I leverage all three of those. No. It's a blend of both. Uh-huh. Um, the, the good thing that I like about them is that they have different um, resource tools that you can, or groups that you can join uh, for the different buyers that are out. And if you get on there, you have to take, you know, maybe a, a, a technical t- uh, test. And yeah. they generally, like a, a pre, a pre um, they give you the uh, instructional before they actually have you take a test. The oh, test okay. usually lasts five to 15 minutes. Yeah. If you go through and pass those tests now, or whatever new work orders come through on their platform, they're going to first look into their their technician pool of everyone that's already passed their their initial requirements. Oh, they okay. Sign those. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's real cool. Yeah, I think once I'm uh, when I'm getting like getting close to wrapping up this um, this project, things like uh, it's going on to the end of the month. I'll, I'll I'll start getting like looking into signing up for those. Um, and with those, are those are those like same same deal with Field Nation? Most of them Monday through Friday in the mornings. Yeah, pretty much. Ah oh, man, I need they do have so many. I mean, they do have have some that pick up in the um, afternoon and then go into the evening. And then they also have some that go overnight. It just depends on the, the project. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see, yeah, I was able to I was able to uh, get a get an overnight job for one of these days uh, next week. I'm like super excited for that. So yeah, I'll be working working mornings, um, Field Nation, with this one project, and then I've got that one. Um, but it's you know it's a one off sort of thing instead of it being like more consistent. I, I, I will say this: I like the tip that you and um, gave. Um, maybe a week ago about you just turning off all your notifications except for uh, the announcement of the new work and whether or not you had gotten accepted. I, I like that aspect. Oh, so that, you mean uh, the, that the ones that are routed? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. That comes back on so much uh, uh, SMS chatter on my phone. Right, Ooh. right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like being a part of a group chat. It's like, you know, so much of it you really don't care about. <laughs> okay, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know if it's been reassigned to somebody else. I don't care about that. I just want to know if I got assigned or if it's new. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad glad that uh, that helped. Definitely glad that helped out. Nice. Um, yeah, so my, my buddy uh, Mace Valor, I'm not sure if you've seen any of his videos. He uh, he does like Amazon Flex videos and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so he he sent he um, he sent me a link for let me see what is this thing called? Uh, does it work? No, no, no. Handy. Yeah, yeah. Handy. Um, so I just signed up for that one and I got some some work on that one. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's like more it's like less technical work um but it's like more handyman type stuff so like painting and garden work um hanging you know tvs and fr- picture frames and things like that and uh it seems like it pay- pays pretty decent um from what i've seen it's around like like 20 to 30 bucks an hour you know nothing crazy right. but you know not bad not bad there's a lot it seems like there's a lot of work that comes through those Let me see. So yeah, so one was handy. Um, God, I can't remember the other one that he was telling me about. But anyways, yeah, yeah. So handy is the one that I've signed up for so far. Yeah. Um, also, have you have you have you have you signed up for a Task Rabbit? Yeah. Um... What's funny is I can't seem to pick up any gigs. 
which is weird. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'd signed up back when I was in Maryland, um, and I never really got into it. I was just, you know, so busy with other other stuff. But uh, yeah, I think I think one thing that I that would be really nice would be like some sort of like third party management system to help you like organize all your gigs. You know, it's like you know you're signed up for X, Y, and Z, and you know there's something available on this one and available on that one. And you can pick and choose instead of having to check like 50 different yeah. apps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they they do have those aggregators. Um, the thing is, you have to set up um, what they call uh, you have to grab those particular platforms that are mm-hmm. API. So if you got a login, maybe let's say for instance, Field Nation, On Force, Handy, and TaskRabbit all have APIs. Yeah. For login. You just have to find out what the API keys are and tie them into that one platform. Uh-huh. That platform. I would love the fire one. That's, that's, that definitely sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, oh, man, that's right. I, uh, how you'd have to, yeah, you'd definitely have to hook into their APIs. I've done some uh, API um, web development with, uh, what was it, Edmunds, you know, the Edmunds car ser- service thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I use their API to, to write a... Um, Oh my God! What was this to write a uh, servicing system for a car shop, um, where people could like you know type in the make and model and whatnot, and it pulled up all the information on Edmunds. And I'll tell you, uh, API development kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, depending on whose API you're using. But I was thinking yeah. about I was thinking about making something like that. But like fuck, having to having to hook into like 50 different companies' APIs. That sounds god awful. Yeah, you definitely would have to have some type of back, you know, like a database that would actually pull all that data in. Uh-huh. And then your database would have to do all the all the back end uh, aggregating and then be able to present it in a more uh, uh, manageable uh, uh, interface for, for your little particular funny. Right. Man, yeah, nope. I think, I think I'm going to take a pass on that one. <laughs> 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 I was like. Uh-huh. Somebody's gonna listen in and say like, "Dang, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, create something like that. I could probably whip it up in about half a day." Yeah, I don't. Shit, something like that seems like it's a couple months like of a project. That's that's a lot of programming that would be required for that. Like, is like understanding each company's APIs and some of them have these weird kinks and stuff. You know, it's. Yeah, this would be super time consuming to put that together. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> it would be ha- it would be super useful though, that's for sure. Yeah. That would be super useful. Oh, sorry, what, what, were, what was that? Uh, you were saying something? No, you, you were saying that your friend had mentioned something about a company called Andy. Handy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, Handy. So, like I was saying, my boy Mace Fowler, um, he's using he's using that, and it seems like he's getting like three jobs per day, like at least one to three jobs per day, and um, I think they're for like three hours at a time, and they pay like. Uh, like a hundred or hundred and twenty dollars for the for the three hours. At least the one that I got, it was three hours for hundred and twenty bucks. Um, and it's like all different types of uh, types of like handyman work, you know, like gardening and um, hanging TVs and picture frames and stuff like that, and um, house cleaning. But um, I, I haven't. I don't think they do anything like Field Nation, um, where you can do uh like it work it's it's pretty much all for uh residential and no no commercial but yeah, it seems it seems pretty interesting so I, i'm signed up I've, I've got a i've got a job scheduled for uh was it next week saturday and so i'm pretty pretty excited to get into that 
y'all have to check those out, guys out. Do you have like a, a referral code or anything like that? Or? Um, I used his referral code and I haven't looked into how to create my own. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'll what I'll do is I'll 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 um I'll look into it a little bit more and maybe after the stream I'll I'll see if I can shoot you my referral code and if not I'll I'll send his. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right, I think I think I'm going to go ahead and uh and oh, end oh. end the stream. It's been 45 minutes and it's pretty pretty good uh pretty good stream. Um if anybody else has any other questions or comments, you guys can go ahead and shoot them to me. Um, outside of that, A. Kent, any any uh, closing remarks? Um, I was going to just say, um, keep stacking them. Hey, if you want to holler, holler at me uh, about uh, you know, setting up uh, a with uh, cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. If we up on, uh, on uh, Google Hangout, man. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Alrighty, all right. Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping in, A. Kent. Everybody else who's uh, sticking around, thank you for dropping in, dropping those likes. Appreciate it. Uh, and I will catch you guys next time. All right, peace.